Sup, what's new? Serious time here. This is part two of Ty the Tasmanian Tiger, the original game ported to PC. Now, you know, I gotta say, <laughs> I'm very glad I'm on part two now because I had to redo that first episode maybe at least five times. And I watched that entire opening cutscene about five times, had every dialogue box open five times, and it was just so annoying because the first time the recording corrupted and the second one I thought was laggy when I played it, so I just deleted it, and then the third one, yes. mm -hmm. same yes. thing. Yes, Thunderlegs power this talisman machine. Make sure you visit all the portals. And yeah, so I've just been having one hell of a time so far. This time, though, we are going to ship Rex. Not walk in the park, apparently. <laughs> See, I'm left-handed, and I think they intend you to go right here first, because I'm lefty, I just went to the left and was like, I should probably be going to the right. Welcome to the Great Barrier Reef, full of beautiful fish, friendly natives, and inviting sandy beaches. It's a beaut spot for a swim, if you know how. Ooh, but Ty doesn't know how to swim. However, is he going to get past this challenge? And he didn't fall on his face this time, he's getting better. You know, he got... I'm kind of curious as to what that is, that hollow cube. I wasn't sure what it was, didn't know what to do with it. I like the soundtrack of this place a lot. It reminds me of, of Jack and Daxter, like the first game, the Precursor Legacy. Which is one of my favorite games of all time. It, it vaguely reminds me of like Sentinel Beach, I think. Just uh, different, obviously. These, uh, sun chair bouncing mechanics? Not bad, either. I'm just gonna turn down the audio in my headphones here quick, jeez. There we go, that's a lot more tolerable. Ty, mate, good to see you again. G'day, Rex. You saved anyone today? Funny you should say that. Elle went for a bit of a swim out near Danger Spike. Danger Spike? Where's that, Rex? That sounds dangerous, it's I don't know It's a nice why. little spot, not too far from Shark Reef. Yeah, and? Well, anyway, she's an excellent swimmer, but she hasn't come home yet. I'm starting to get a bit worried. That was a weird audio Strife. problem there. I'm on lifeguard duty, so could you have a look for me? Well, <laughs> I would, mate, but I, I can't swim. I can't go save her, I'm on lifeguard what? duty. I'll teach you. Follow me. When you're in water, press the bite button to dive. Then tap the jump button to start swimming. Okay. Wish me luck. By the way, those boomerangs of yours won't work underwater. But I got a prezzy for you that'll fix a prezi. that. I love it. These are aqua rings. I found them in an old ship. I don't even years see them ago. in there. They cut through water like a hot knife through butter. If you can dive under the water and grab them. Well, then they're all yours. Oh, yeah, there, I saw them. Okay. <laughs> pro, pro gameplay right here. I'm the guy Good you want one. getting your Let's Plays done. The Aquarangs work like regular boomerangs, but you can only use them underwater. Oh, and one other thing. You're not a fish, mate, so keep an eye on your air supply. I'm not? Yeah, thanks, Rex. Use the aqua ring to hit this switch. It'll open the shark door so you can be on your way. Sweet. Is this how it works in Australia? Like, you, you want to go swimming, and then just you have to throw aqua boomerangs at things to open doors and stuff? It's totally how it works over there, right? I mean, I'm in Canada, I've never been over there. You know, I gotta say, this was a pretty decent underwater level. I didn't hate it. Great work, Ty. 
You've learned how to swim and use those aquarangs. With a bit of practice, you'll be a champion swimmer just like me. Hey, Betty. This is my good mate. She'll show you the way to danger, Spike. Good luck, mate. Hey, Ty. You can swim faster by tapping the jump button to gain speed. <laughs> Let's go find Elle. I don't like her voice whatsoever. Wow. You know, I'm I'm sorry if I don't commentate a hell of a lot. This time around, I am so dead tired. I don't know why, but lately I've been struggling with just like I've been sleeping a lot, and it's not been doing much for me. And so I just made coffee at like 7 p.m. <laughs> that I just chugged down. Now I'm recording this. It's, I feel a lot better, but not great. I'm. I am very much considering using a controller for this game instead, just because it is somewhat frustrating to use a keyboard. Just because it's harder to aim your jumps. Some more useless drills. So, um, me and my brother... Me and my brother have been struggling a little bit lately and trying to find ideas for the podcast. Like, we were kind of lucky at first that... Stay out of the way of those sharks! They're big meanies! Press the action button to swim into the cage. Press the action button again to swim out. Ah, I am also fluent in tutorial, young fish. Me and my brother, yeah, we were pretty lucky before, because we had both just seen Endgame for the first podcast episode. And then after that he was like, let's talk Pikachu, because I just saw that, it was cool. I never saw the movie, to be honest. And then we had someone recommend E3, and now we're out of things to talk about. So I think we might just do a general podcast, or we're going to talk about D&D specifically. Some good old Dungeons and Dragons which we'll be recording tomorrow. However, that that video will be up before this one. Because, you know, post-commentary and uploading later is, you know, it'd be like that. Yeah, we always record the podcast, and I will almost always put it out the next day. So those are much... So in a way, the videos that come out after the podcasts are older than those pod... Did I just kill a shark? Okay, I was confused here at first, because I wasn't sure how to get out, and then I saw the, uh... Did I miss it here? Well, I eventually see that little floating platform that I just swam under. Yeah, I'm just like, what am I supposed to do here? The game looks quite nice, I think, though, for being a GameCube game. Ouch. At least the shark just wanted to nibble. I also noticed I missed the seahorse quest at the beginning, and I had to go back and do it. God, I am not smart with this stuff, am I? Can I just say, how do aquarangs work? Like, what property do they have that makes them work underwater? I ain't complaining, because they're pretty dang useful over here. I'm just like, you, help me. Please. You know, I bet there's crazy speedruns for this game. Because no offense to the developers, but it seems like this game's easy to glitch out. Ha! Pro! Pro! There we go. I was still learning to swim in this level. So I kept forgetting to dive, and I would just go in and then drop down under the water, which was way slower. I am also slightly annoyed that the enemies don't drop any collectibles. Like, I get it, you already have opals, you have thunder eggs, you have cogs. But 
I feel like there, sh there could be something a little more to it, eh? Oh, and of course, bilbies. Don't forget the bilbies. The, uh, the scout flies. And this kept annoying me because the track, in this case, forces you to lean to towards this, the, the left. So I kept having to readjust myself not to hit the wall. And it's very obvious when I do that with the keyboard. I suspect, though, if I had a controller, it would look a little smoother, the animation for that, instead of being so jerky. But you know what? This is a... I want to dead. That hurt. Oh, and I'm going backwards. Please notice. Please notice, Mark. Come on. Come on, please. Please. Oh, I am not an intelligent. Also, surprisingly, it's not that visible here. But when I was recording, I could see the the backside of Ty's bandana clipping through the back of his head a little bit, which is really annoying. Also, I think it is marginally faster to jump. I don't know if there's any truth to that. I It could just be the exact same speed, really. But it feels faster to jump in this game than it is to just run everywhere. But also, it, the, it the sound effect repeatedly playing kind of annoys me. Hey, doll. How are you? Doll. Yeah, good. And what about you? Let me guess. Rex was worried about me again? Yeah, that's right. Isn't he a sweetheart? Well, I better get home so he stops fretting. Are you kidding me? Right, then. So this lifeguard guy, Rex... Oh, wait. I found this on the way. Want it? Is this his wife or his girlfriend or something? And he's just like, nah, man. I'll leave her here. I, I'm on lifeguard duty. I can't go save my own wife. Who just swam into shark-infested waters. Can't do that, mate. That... What, what is Rex's problem here, man? I think he wants a divorce secretly. Wow. Okay, so prepare for me to climb up here like three plus times because I start noticing cogs that I missed. Also, this place looks really freaking bare from up high. Like, it doesn't look nearly as good from high up. I gotta say, this gliding mechanic, though, is not half bad. I'm pretty sure I missed the landing here, like a true pro gamer repping Delta Sword. Yep, that was entirely my fault. Please? There we go. I also love the slight physics on these hover things. I love when games do that. Especially the third-person platformers. It's just satisfying. Right, you could say I'm in third gear now. Right, I forgot about those boxes too. You know it's gonna be good. At least I found that bilby. I can't really do an Australian accent that well. Also, I know everybody and their mother over here in Canada pronounces it Australia, like Australia, aw. However, I've always heard Australian people say Australia. Like, yeah, I'm from, in fact, half of them, they talk kind of stereotypically and they're like, yeah, man, I'm from Australia. Just Australia. That's where I'm from. Don't know, so it sounds to me like it's pronounced Australia. Like, it's there's a lot of emphasis on the R, it's not Australia. It's, it's just Australia, man. It's, it's Australia. Don't quote me on that, because again, I am from Canada. You know, I am kind of curious as well where the majority of my audience watches from. I'm pretty sure it's just Canada as well. But I'm always looking at my YouTube analytics trying to figure out how to do things better, how to just learn from the videos I've uploaded and how they did what I can do better in the future. 
And one of the things that is yet to load is all of the audience statistics, like gender, age, uh, geography, all that stuff. I really want to see that stuff. Now, yeah, I try and go for this really far away one, and I think I actually get it. No, I must not. Yeah, well, that was a cool dive, though. That sound was straight out of Jack and Daxter. His, uh, get-up sound there. Right, mate, let's do this. So, I am kind of curious, for all you guys watching, uh, please comment down below, what would you say is your favorite video game of all time? I know that's a mighty challenging question for some people, but I mean, because I'm always looking for new games to play, it kind of is boring playing just Realm Royale 24-7. So what games do you guys like? Like what's your favorite of all time? My all-time favorite game for years and years was Jack 3 of the Jack and Daxter games. And I would argue it might still be. For a while, when Undertale came out, it was my favorite game of all time. And honestly, it affected me so much when I played Undertale. I did a pacifist, a genocide, and a neutral run. And I was so floored by that game that I never played it again because I knew it would never... It it was so good that I would it would never take me by surprise like it did or make me feel the same way as my first time doing it. So I just have never played it again. But then, so I think personally if it weren't for the community, I would still say it's my favorite game, but the community is one of the cringiest on the internet now. But Undertale was truly something special to me. It was something special that got me in a way that I had never been really exposed to before. Just, it was such a heartfelt thing for me. It's kind of like my favorite comic book ever, Why the Last Man. When I... I didn't even finish the series yet. I mean, no, it's, I have. But, I mean, at the time when I hadn't finished it, I got really depressed when I was reading it. Because I was like, wow, I'm never gonna read something this good again. I don't want to finish this. And I did finish it, and it was satisfying. And it was sad. And it was just heart heart wrenching, and I've never once went and reread that series because I know it wouldn't be the same. So that there was is that actually it? No, I must go back and do the race, eh? Because I didn't what that idle animation there that was beautiful. I suppose this could just be the end of the video. I'm just gonna see- sorry, I didn't even bother to review the footage to see if I needed to cut anything out, because, you know, I'm really tired like that. So I'm not sure if this is the end, but, you know, I'll just say, do you guys have any ideas for the future podcasts? Because I would really like some input. I noticed I don't think I've ever been left a real comment before in any Project Duo Force video, so I'm looking to interact with you guys in the comments. I don't want you guys to just be there, but yeah, okay, so that's the end of this video. Like, I don't want you guys to just be there in the comments. I want you guys to be, like, part of the family, you know? Okay, no, I definitely do the race still. Good. But yeah, I want you guys to feel like you're part of the family, you know? We're a little community here, just... What I want this channel to be is just real. So, Ty, are you up for a race? See if you can keep up. Like, I want... 
to just be a guy. See, this is, sorry, I'm slow in this race because I don't jump and dive. I realize now that's what I was supposed to do. <coughs> but I want this channel to feel real in a way. Like, I'm just a guy genuinely talking about a game that I enjoy and just my life and stuff. It's not like some crazy persona I put on. No, I don't put on any fake persona here. The me in my videos, I always want to be the me that you would meet in real life. And so when when I'm commentating in my videos, yeah, it might not be the most interesting stuff, but it's like you're watching your friend play a game, you know? And for a, a fair few of you guys, that is what it is. You're just literally watching your friend play a game here, and thank you guys, by the way. But... I like that, though, where it's it's homely. And I hope that my channel's always like that, where I, I don't want to ever start being fake for views or over-exaggerating and stuff like that. Now, am I going to use some clickbait titles? Hell yes, I am, because, you know, I like to get promoted by the YouTube algorithm. I like it when people see my videos. But, I also don't, like, stress over it at all, because, I mean, if nobody watches a video, nobody watches a video. Hell, I make videos that I want to watch, as weird as that sounds. I don't make videos that I want other people to watch, so much as just, hey, I enjoyed doing this, I'm gonna put some commentary over this. Even if nobody watches it, five years down the road, I'll come back to this channel, watch a few of these videos, and say, hey, I had fun back then. You little ripper, you fair can beat me! I've trained you well, mate. My uh, swimming coach gave this to me when I first beat him in a race. Now I want you to have it. Gee, thanks mate. Woohoo, thank you cool. Rex. And now here goes the horrific search for a bunch of baby seahorses. And this is the first level that slightly annoyed me. Now, is it terrible? No. But it was somewhat annoying. I know I talked about how there should be more collectibles. This is not what I meant. I don't want to collect baby seahorses for some stranded mother. It did help me notice a bunch of areas I never saw before. And you know, I am a fish guy. And I don't mean fishing. Oh, dearie me. My sweet little angels have wandered off exploring. Now I can't find them anywhere. Please, can you help me? Like, I have an aquarium at home, where currently I have about three, I think soon to be perhaps six, since I'm gonna get a few more, just because they're looking a little lonely and I know you're supposed to have a little more. I used to have three more, um, catfish. Corydoras, specifically. I used to have six total, but... The, uh... I had three albinos, which were a little older than the rest. They were my first fish I ever got. And... They... Were almost five, I think. They were almost five years old. Or even maybe past five. Before they had all passed away. And these, these three that are here now, one of them is like a, about a half year younger than those three that passed. And then the other two are s significantly younger, like a, a year or two. But I have those three right now. And I have a goldfish, which is... It was supposed to be a... Some sort of... I think it was like a, a calico fantail goldfish, except instead of being egg-shaped, it was slim-bodied. I'd never seen a slim-bodied goldfish with two tails before. I thought that was super cool, and so it's... It's... that's my other fish. That one's only a few months old, though. It's a little cutie named, uh, Min Sun. And the goldfish doesn't seem to mind the the catfish at all. They they get along. However, during feeding time, the uh, the goldfish 
tends to not let anyone else into the center space of the tank, so I, I'll usually feed the, the Corydoras in their little cave area, and then he won't go over there while he's just eating in the center. It's not that, like, he attacks them or anything, but he'll just nudge them out of the way more so. Like, he'll just continually bump into them until they leave. He's he's not that much bigger than that. I know before, I had one of those 40 cent feeder fish, which she was named Confucius. I thought it was a guy at first. Give me a break. And Confucius grew... It was a Sarasa comet. It was a feeder fish. And... I had her for about three and a half years until she got stuck in an ornament while I was at work. But she got to a whopping nine inches. Which, you know, I've always heard those feeder fish are really poorly bred, but I've also heard that the fantail goldfish or whatever uh, Min Sun is, they're supposed to not get that big at all. But I also am curious, because he's clearly not your stereotypical fantail, because he is a slim body? I am quite curious if he'll get larger, or if he'll just be the same size as all the other fantails. Because he's already probably doubled in size from when I got him, and he's gotten a lot thicker, too. You know, this is a water level I would say was almost fun. Normally I hate them, because in every game they're terrible, especially the Jack games. God. God. In the Titan suit in the Jack games? That's just painful. Actually the Titan suit itself is just painful in those games. I don't know if that's what it's called actually. Um, so it sounds like, I may I might just be repeating myself, but we're going to be doing Dungeons and Dragons for the following podcast, and I have some stories for you guys. You're going to learn a little bit about the nature of D&D &D and what it's like to be a DM for eight years. Are those supposed to be, like, lobsters? I'm also surprised that the water level is not really lagging at all, because you'd expect having so much reflective surfaces would cause a lot of lag, along with all these little Thank tiny you. entities in the water. But it really doesn't. Like, there's so many small textures loaded in here, like every tiny little plant here, the textures of the rocks, all this reflective water, all the entities in the water. You know, this is a pretty darn cool level. I think I even saw a starfish there. You see, this is where a controller would be more useful. Because I could do that way more fluidly with the controller. You know what? I might even record some of this later today. And you know, I'm going to be using a controller for that. Just to test it out. Useless frills. Use. I feel like that... I need to Photoshop a picture for the next one. Like, for, for the next thumbnail, that's just a frill looking upset, and, and, and it'll just be titled Useless Frills. Or if I ever make a compilation of every frill in this game being one-shot. I want there to be a horde level. Where there's just, like, 30. I want 30 frills coming at me, so it's at least somewhat of a challenge. Like, in that first level in 2-Up? where you fight like 10 of them, that was pretty decent. That was, that was like the most riveting combat so far, even though it sucked. Also, can I just say, 
You can totally swim faster in real life by just holding boomerangs like that, I swear. I do it myself at the YMCA all the time. My babies! But where- But where are the others? Yep, because there's that one that I missed, and I think it takes me... Actually... What? Um, okay, so you guys are just gonna be seeing a... A, uh, thumbnail screen right now, because... Apparently, I didn't continue recording from there, or the, uh, the recording corrupted or something, because it just ends there. Because I know for a fact I completed this quest, though, and got a thunder egg for it. So, I guess that's it for the video. <laughs> Bit awkward, but, I mean, hey, what can you do? So... I hope y'all enjoyed seeing this episode of Tie the Tasmanian Tiger, and I will catch y'all on the flip side.